Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about WireGuard. And WireGuard is a technology to link two computers together. And you can use it as a VPN or a tunnel technology or anything like that. And it can be used in a lot of different network setups. For instance, you can have point to point and then you create a tunnel where you can route traffic through. You can have it as a star and use it as a VPN with many clients connecting into the same server. And you can have a mesh where you have multiple computers connecting to each other. And what makes WireGuard very interesting and very powerful is that it's simple. It doesn't have that much code in it. It's less than 10,000 lines of code and it has a real opinion about things. Uh, for instance, the encryption is a SHA SHA 20 with pre-shared keys. So you need to have both the public key and the private key in both ends so in order to encrypt traffic. So you give a pu public key to somebody else and they give the, uh, their public key to you and you can communicate that way. And another part <coughs> is that it uses curve, uh, Lipschen curve to key exchange if you need to do that. It has poly uh, 1305 as the message authentication codes. And it also has a specific zip hash for the hashable keys. Uh, it uses uh, Blake2 for in, uh, cryptographic hash functions. And it only works over UDP. So it has set some boundaries. This is what we include. It is extensible, so you can add different uh, plugins to it if you like, but it has a very neat little core that it works with. And if you have a core and if it's open source and it's not that much code, then probably a lot of people are able to ingest that code and look for security vulnerabilities and it has been done as well. There has been a lot of people both uh, assessing the code and doing reviews of the code in order to see is this really a good solution for a VPN or communication between two endpoints. So uh, it's interesting and it's also easy to set up. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to set up a wire guard connection between two hosts in order to see how easy it actually is. So let's switch over to my screen here. We see that we have two nodes. We have node one, VG node one and VG node two. And first off, we need to uh, install WireGuard and it's pretty new in the sense of Debian. So it will be in the kernel 5.6, but that's not the default kernel of the uh, Buster version of Debian. So I need to add the back porch to this repository in order to take in packages from uh, the newest version bullseye. So we'll do that. We add the back porch here and then we need to do an uh, apt update in order to get those packages in there. And we also uh, need to install WireGuard, of course. And that is both a client application and some tooling. Uh, and it also is a module that will be uh, uh, loaded into your kernel to do the actual traffic. So uh, I will start these installations here. They take a little bit of a while and I'll see you after they have installed. And we're back and we have installed WireGuard. And what I'm gonna do now is designate one of the clients or one of these machines as the server. So the, I would call one of them server and the other one client. So the client will connect to the server, but they can communicate in both ways. I just need to have that to simplify the process here. So let's say that node one is the server and I do an uh, IP show, uh, address show, so I will get the information about this. So this is uh, 2, uh, 192, uh, 192, 168, 6.6. So that's the one that I want to connect to. 
uh, with its tunnel. Next up, we need some keys. So we will create a private key on each machine and save that into a file. And then we will use that private key in order to generate a public key. So we will set a UMask here. We'll gen the key and get the private key. And we will take the same VG as in WireGuard. So that's a very simple command for WireGuard. And we run a public key. Uh, function on that which we give the private key and it returns the private uh, public key. Uh, give us it a private key and it gets uh, the public key back so now we have both keys and we can just look at them like this so we see that we have some key and this is a base 64 encoded version of a 256 bits key i believe uh, and Next up, we need to have a configuration for the wire guard uh, device, the network device. So we will go in and edit this file. We do a sudo on that. And as this is a server, I will uh, config, uh, copy in the server configuration. We can see here that we have the interface and the interface has a private key, which is the server key. It will listen on a port and you can choose any port here. It will be a hidden port. So if you have something that scans for open port, it will not uh, answer on this port if it's not sent a correctly um, uh, designed package for WireGuard. So uh, in this case, we have this port here, but you can choose any port. And then I have here a client that I want to connect to it and what IP that client will tell itself to be. In this case, I will use the 10 network 0202. So that's the client, but I need the keys as well. Uh, so in this case, we have the client key. We can go down here and cat the VG uh, public key here. So this is the public key of the client. So let's take that one and put it in here remove that and put in the client key and then we need to go to the server here and get the private key and we have already done that so we will copy that one and open the server configuration here and put in the private key and that's pretty much everything that you need to do on the server end in order to configure this uh, interface now we need to have a setup for the interface and they have provided a very simple one for that as well. So we do sudo in etc network on the Debian system interfaces D and then we will have this VG0. It's the file. We will copy this in here. And the first line says that this is an interface that I want to bring up automatically. And for this interface, I want it to have a stat static IP. In this case, we take the server and I will set to uh, 10.0.2.1 uh, as the IP address. And uh, before you bring it up, say that it's a type of wire guard and set a specific configuration for this wire guard. And uh, when you bring it down, then delete the interface. So that's pretty much it. And we will save this file here. And we have that done. We will do the if up on this specific interface. And now we have WireGuard running on this system. If we have done any configuration issue, then we can delete that interface. We saw that in the configuration file. But at this moment, I believe we have something working. If we do an IP address show, we'll see that we got an extra interface here. And we can also do a sudo vg and we see that we have something running with a public key and a private key on a specific port and it allows a new peer with this public key and the allowed ip of this uh, and you can allow larger ip ranges as well if you like so next up we will configure the client and the setup is very similar 
One thing I can tell you as well is that you can run a command in order to add peers dynamically. So you would run VG set the specific uh, device or the uh, interface that you are using, a peer, the public key of that peer, allowed IPs, and you will add that to your system as well. So let's configure the client here. Uh, let's go into etc, wireguard, and vg1.conf configuration. Oh, I forgot, need to do sudo as well. So now we will put in the client configuration and it's very similar to the server configuration. The difference here is that we say that we have a specific peer which has an endpoint. In this case, we say that the server is on 192.168.6.6. So that's the server IP and the endpoint has a specific port that we want to connect to. And then we need to add the specific uh, keys here as well, public key for the server. So let's uh, get the public key here uh, easily. Copy that over like that. Server public key, remove that and put in the server public key. And then we need to cat the private key of our client and copy that over into the configuration here. And there we have that, save that. And next up, we need the interface again. So we do a sudo y etc network interfaces d. So that's the dynamically loaded ones, vg0. And we will add that configuration as well. The only thing that we change here is the IP address. In this case is 10.0.2.2. So this is the client uh, IP address. We uh, shut that down and save and we bring the interface up. So if we do an IP address show here, we see that we have a new interface with that IP. And if we do a sudo VG, we see that we have a public interface with a public key. We see that we have a peer here that we want to connect to. And if I do a ping of 10.0.2.1, I get a response back. If I do the same with two, which is the, this machine, I will also get a ping response. If we open this up, we see that this has the latest handshake, two second, eight seconds ago, and it has transferred some bytes back and forth. If I like and can sudo into this uh, server machine, I need to say that it's okay, that this is a new server. And if I put in the password, and do that correctly, which I didn't do, uh, I will be in node one. And this is over a secure tunneled connection uh, using WireGuard to that machine. So that machine could be anywhere el uh, uh, else on the um, internet and you can uh, connect to any port on that machine through this interface, which is really cool. And if we go into the server and then uh, do a ping against uh, the other node, it's available there. And we can do the same here, SSH, in the other direction. And it's also open to uh, reach to any port on node two through this connection. And uh, so this was what I wanted to cover today, how to set up a WireGuard an uh, interface uh, that you can connect uh, through the internet. Uh, it uses a very high port and that's because those ports are um, available uh, to use uh, even through the internet as um, dynamic ports. If you put something uh, between 0 and uh, 1024, it needs to be a root privileged and it also needs to be uh, a service that is available. And by adding it in this high range, it's a little bit more um, secure or a little bit more hidden. And in this case, it doesn't really matter, but if you really want to hide your natural traffic and don't want anyone to know about the specific port, you can put it on a good range. Then again, if there is traffic going back and forth, you can snoop that traffic and find the port number. 
But if you don't have the public key or the private key, you can't really intersect any messages or change the information going through this tunnel because it's a secure tunnel with a good encryption. Uh, I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.